Okay. With that, um, good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's built their snowman today. Um, so at this point, I will call the meeting of the Northampton uh, Housing Authority um, in session. Um, and the date is January the, what is it, the 20? Third. 23rd, thank you, thank you, <laughs> 2023. Okay, um, we'll begin the meeting with an um, update from Gary. I, Gary has uh, uh, asked to be moved forward. He will be leaving us probably after this to go build his snowman, maybe. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with uh, Gary's report. Um, Madam Chair, would you like me to call the roll? Yes, sorry, yes. Yes. Um, uh, Chairperson Richards? Present. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Brooks? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Jones? Here. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kensell? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Carney? Present. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. We had so many names in the beginning. Uh, okay, we'll turn the meeting over to our accountant, Gary. Please, uh, the base, please move forward. Okay. Um, basically, tonight you're voting on uh, the acceptance of the quarterly reports, which is for as of December 31. Um, it is the six month um, report. We're six months into our fiscal year. Uh, based upon the consolidated report that we have, um, from our non-utility expenses, we have actually expended 43.47%. Uh, normally we would be at, if we were spending everything, we would be at 50%. So it's kind of a good way of looking and saying we're right on target when it comes to our expenses. Um, the 400 project and the 689 and MRVP, which the financial reports, those are what you're voting on tonight. Uh, again, it reiterates exactly what the consolidated report shows that we're on actually underspending at this point. Um, so I, I see no problems with that. Uh, second to what we're going to be act, act, we're asking you to approve tonight is an internal budget revision to our federal 26 one and two. Um, it's an internal budget. But what that does is the reason we had to have to have that in, and I'm sure that uh, I think uh, Kara actually indicated on it, we had to have some extensive repairs done on our one ton uh, dump truck. Um, and because it came over $5,000, it becomes a capitalized um, expense, which means we add it to our, uh, the F&E and therefore required an amendment to the 7520 account in that, in that program. Uh, it is an internal one. It does not have to get submitted to HUD, uh, but it does require a board vote. Those are basically the two items that we're discussing tonight. Are there any questions? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Commissioner Darby. So you're going to repair one of the uh, one of the trucks that you have, right? We we had to have it repaired. I think it was Kara when it went to um, inspection. It required so, some extensive repairs. So um, as as part of the budget that was approved, we were putting a new um, dump body on it um, because that truck is something that we use on a daily basis. We have to do the cleanouts and take stuff to. Uh, haul it to the dump. And so it has a lift body. And part of our budget was to replace that lift body. And when they went to do that, um, in order for it to pass inspection, um, there were, um, there was, hold on, I have the exact amount, just a second. Um, and I think I had set it in the email, um, $6,564.38 worth of repairs, which were, um, the body alarm, uh, the, 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 an alarm goes off for the body to be up and down, the, the backup alarm, um, the battery needed replacement, the shock needed re shocks needed replacement, the tie rods and ends, and it needed an alignment, um, uh, and then the brakes as well, then change the transmission fluid and filter, flush the radiator and change the coolant, 
Plus we did the inspection sticker as well. Um, and so it becomes capitalized once that, um, reach, as Gary indicated, it becomes capitalized once it reaches $5,000 um, and um, we, we did have the repairs done. Well, I was just curious because, you know, just this is a regular car. When we get to an inspect, inspection every year, they, they sort of say, look, this is about to go out in about three months use of this and da, 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 da. It just seems to me that this is a huge expense from one year to the next, with, was this not foreseenable? I mean, who is who are the people who are working on these cars and, I mean, these uh, vehicles? And that seems like quite an expense. So this isn't just a regular vehicle. This is the dump truck. So it's it's got a pneumatic dump bed that lifts up to dump the stuff out. And so you're not able to see all of those. Some of those things were, it's time to do it. Um, and And we planned on doing it. But some of those things were not foreseeable until they took the bed off, um, and hence why it was an unex unexpected and unbudgeted item. And, and, the, and I think when we look at it, um, being the one ton in a dump truck, just to replace that was right now is upward of seventy thousand dollars. So yeah. it was worth the sixty six hundred to put into it to get the additional life out of that vehicle. And uh, how old is it? And again, who are the people who work on it? So included the invoice in the package. Um, the work was done at G GNS Industrial Inc. Um, they're, uh, they're the ones that did this particular work. Um, and I'm sorry, uh, in the email, I believe I stated what year it was, just a moment. 2011. Yeah, 2011. Yeah, 2011. Uh, and it's a Ford F-350 dump truck with the pneumatic bed. Are there any other questions for Gary on this or, or Kara? Just as a point of reference, I'll just say I have a 2002 truck that I just put um, $5,000 into, <laughs> um, and that's a 20-year-old truck. Um, but it, it definitely made much more sense to do that than to buy anything new at this point. So um, I agree with the notion that the 6,800 for what would cost about 70 grand to replace might be a wise investment at this point. Let, let me let me just clarify one thing. We've already spent the money, correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay. So it's only sort of a recategorization of the money uh, because it was over 5,000 to capital. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, it, it puts it on a capital okay. line. It puts it on a capital line item so that because it's over $5,000, which requires the board vote. Okay. Um, and, and that's just an internal budget. It's not a budget that um, HUD or DHCD monitors or needs to approve, um, but it's just so that it's in the right line item um, for, you know, when the financials are done. And just okay, as a so follow-up then. Go ahead. Just as a follow-up. Yeah, just as a follow-up to that. Um, I recall hearing about this. Did we hear about this at a previous meeting, whether it was, because this is not the first time I've heard about that. Can you clarify yes. that? Okay, thanks. Um, so, so we talked about it initially um, uh, when we were doing the budget, because um, we recognize that the the lift body of the dump truck had to be replaced. And so we, we received a, a quote for that. Um, this were, these were items that were found once they removed the dump body um, and in, that, in order for the new dump body to work and for the truck to be where it needed to be and for longevity um, and, and of its useful life, these things needed to be done. Okay, just a point of clarification. So we're not talking about whether we should get a new one or whatever, we've already repaired it. That would be a discussion for a later time. So we're just approving the, the moving of the item to capital. Yeah, That's you're, correct. You're, do, you're doing two things. You are, um, there's one motion to approve the Q2 FY23 financials. Our yes. Six and yep. there's a motion um, 
to authorize the 26 one and two internal budget amendment line item for that. Okay. okay, so let's authorize the budget move first. I will move that motion forward. And do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, uh, can you call the roll? Yes, um, Madam Chair, um, motion approved Q2 uh, FY23 financials as prepared and presented by Gary DePace. Chairperson Richards. Yes. Vice Chairperson Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. E, uh, sure. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Carney. Yes. Thank you. Okay, okay. so the, the motion carries. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so the second motion is to move the lot. What is the second motion? To move the line item to capital? Yeah, the, motion, the motion is to authorize 26 one and two internal budget amendment to the capital line yeah. item. Okay, I'll move that motion forward. Is there a second? Second. Uh, please call the roll. Yeah, motion to authorize 2622 internal budget amendment. Chairperson Richards? Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Brooks? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Thank you. Madam yes. Chair, um, with um, six days, motion carries. Yes, motion carries. Uh, good. So we have a truck that's now in good condition, and we ha also have financials that looking pretty good, Gary, huh? <laughs> yes, I'd say I'd say we're we're doing good. All right. Thank you. So first first quarter. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Go build Thank your you snowman. Yep. Okay. Bye, Bye, Gary. Thank you. Okay. With that, we will um, move on to uh, tenant comments. Jack, do we have tenants waiting? We do have a few, um, and so the first individual who has the ability to unmute themselves is identified as laptop. I believe that is someone from the public. Laptop. Yeah, it, it's a uh, it's Mary Chapman at McDonald. Is that? I think yes. I'm laptop. Okay, your your tenant, right? Yeah, I'm a tenant. So, yes. So that that person, when uh, Miss Chapman, when you speak, it comes up as one two one three. Are you also logged in from a laptop as well? No, I'm on a laptop right now. Um, so I that's know. someone else then. Um, am I laptop or not? No, yours says KC. Okay, I wait. Uh, Jack, gonna, do you want to try the laptop one again to see if yep, they're... Yep, I've asked them to unmute. They haven't unmuted. So the person after them is actually you, Casey. So if you'd like, you can start. Okay, yeah. Remind uh, us of what patients. building you are as well. Um, I'm Casey. I'm at McDonald. And um, I just wanted to touch on a few things. No biggies, really. Um I had mentioned to, I'd written a letter to the executive director and I shared some comments and concerns from tenants here. And I really got a lot of flack for that. In fact, it, she left off with a threat, which was kind of shocking to me because I don't, I don't like threats. I don't think anybody does. But anyway, I was told that, um, that the staff felt bullied by my comments. Well, I'm sorry y'all feel bullied, but that's the way it is. If people are saying things, you don't want to hear them, then you need to tell people we don't want to hear what you like or what you don't like. For some reason, I thought this was a democratically run deal. So I shared the concerns of the tenants here that were they were valid concerns and complaints. Whether you liked it or not, I, you know, that's not the, it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying, if you want to know what's going on with us, we're, we're glad, I'm, I'm glad to speak for people that are afraid to speak to y'all. I don't know why they're afraid to speak to y'all, but they are. So um, anyway, she asked me to quit sending these emails because the staff, like I said, they felt bullied. 
And I'm not quite sure why they felt bullied because all I did was share the concerns and the comments of the staff. Um, now, I'm, I will continue to speak up for people who are fearful of speaking. Um, people are afraid of y'all. You lead with punitive words. You say, do this or else. In fact, the last letter from the executive director uh, said, uh, keep your negativity to yourself. If this continues, I will be forced to refer you to the attorney for lease violation. So what is it? Y'all don't want to know what works and what doesn't work? I'd like, I'd really like to know because uh, we're, you, we're just kind of left here in the dust. I mean, so please do let us know how we can share our concerns with y'all that's going to be acceptable. And I will not be threatened with a lease violation for, and she said she felt forced to refer, she will be forced to refer me. And it's usually when someone says they're forced to do something, someone's like threaten them with something. So if someone's threatening the executive director, they need to stop because she's feeling forced. So uh, there is a huge lack of communication between the residents and the staff that needs to change. It needs to open up. It really needs to open up because we're a very captive audience here. What can I say? So that's about it. Thank you for listening. Thank, Thank you. you, Tracy. Um, the next person who has the ability to unmute themselves is a phone number ending in 5639. And there's also a phone number that ends in 9080. I have prompted both of you to unmute. Feel free to unmute yourself. Hello. You got me? Yep, Hi, you're Roy. good to go. Okay, Jack. Roy Martin, 81 Con Street, apartment 529. Uh, well, first off, I got a little comment. Marilyn, I was going through a lot of my past records when I was running for mayor. I ran across a letter you had sent me. You were running for city council at the time. And a little patch, it said, vote Marilyn Richards. And you invited me to your house, along with, I don't know how many other people, and uh, uh, for coffee, for a uh, little at lunch. So anyway, thank you for that letter. All right, you know, I, uh, got, I'm going to put it in my book. I'm writing my book now. So, And the other thing right now, from what I hear, right, all the apartment 15s all the way from uh, uh, seventh floor all the way down, got a little water damage over the weekend. Uh, I wonder how that happened. Did anyone look into it to see what happened or what? Oh, well, that's right. You can't answer. <laughs> but maybe you can have it in the comments a little later. Uh, and the other thing, right? Everything seems to be going okay here. Uh, that young lady that works in the office, she's doing an excellent job. She's, you know, right on top of things. And uh, Jose, he, he seems to be perking right up lately. Uh, you know, a lot of people say bad things about Jose, but, you know, I can't find much wrong with him. <clears throat> you know, even though I grouch at him at times, all right, but, well, we have our times. So anyways, and uh, Kara, right? Uh, you know, Butch is here looking at the phone and saying, yeah, right, just give me kind of a growl. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, that I see, I see you're doing a fairly good job, Kara. But I think you're taking on too much work on your shoulders, right? Uh, someone said now you got moved into East Hampton. Now, now, you know, taking on all these different places, it might be too much on you, girl, right? And I hope not, but, you know, that's that's up to you. So anyway, Martin, how's your husband doing? You. hope he's doing okay. <laughs> Catch you later, girl. Thank, Bye. Thank you, Roy. Thanks, Thanks for Roy. the walk down memory lane. <laughs> okay, uh, Jack. The next person who can unmute themselves, phone number ends in 9080. Last call, 9080. Um, all right. And then we have Anna Gilbert. 
Oh, actually, 9080 looks like they've unmuted. Yes, Al Shagnon, apartment 329 at the Walter Savo house. I just wanted to make a couple comments on uh, the building. It looks good. They did a decent job on cleaning off that black and green mold. Uh, it's nice to see that the vents are cleaned. Uh, a lot of people with allergies, especially myself, been having a lot of problems with this problem. And I hope we could keep it up and maintain uh, the vents, keep them clean, and try to get rid of some of this other mold around the building. As far as the office goes, I, I think the girl's doing a great job in the office. And uh, I gotta thank Jose for taking care of matters that I have come to him with in the last month or so. Um, and that's all I have to say right now. Thank you so, Thank much. you so much. And the last person is Anna Gilbert. Would you like to unmute? Okay, it doesn't appear, Marilyn. That looks like we have everyone accounted for. Okay, good enough. Uh, we will move forward to staff comments. Are there any staff comments? Seeing none, we will move on. Are there any public comments? Is there anyone from the public in attendance that would like to speak? This moment, we don't have anyone unaccounted for. Okay, very good. Thank you everyone for your comments. Uh, and just a reminder uh, for particularly tenant comments, we will get back to you on uh, your issues. Okay, we will move forward to the executive director's report. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this executive director's report is a summary from uh, for January 2023. Our GPR was $207,495. Uh, we collected $182,463.01, uh, which was 88%. The delinquency of $113,976.95. Um, $4,796 of that is due to retroactive uh, unreported income. Uh, we had no uh, certifications in public housing this month. We had 86 in Section 8. Um, all 86 were, were recertified. Uh, our wait list for federal applicants, one bedroom has 174, two bedroom has 55, three bedroom has 16, four bedroom has two, and Section 8 has 84. Our state applicants uh, family has 15,955. Um, elderly disabled has 4,078. Public housing had three move outs. Section 8 had seven. Public housing had five move ins. Section 8 had two. Public housing has one on notice. End of month vacant ready were three. Unready one for a total of four, all of which are pre leased. We completed three make readies and two of them were rehabs. We took in 342 work orders. Uh, we started the month with 29. Um, we completed 334 work orders and have 37 um, outstanding. Um, one resident at uh, resident comment follow up from the last board meeting, uh, resident McDonald stated that the washer and dryers, washers and dryers were not being kept clean enough. Uh, we are inspecting them twice daily. In the AM, we're inspecting and cleaning and in the PM, we're inspecting and cleaning again if needed. The same resident complained that residents do not have access to the minutes. I emailed this resident a link to the website and the area with instructions on how to view the minutes. Several residents of Salvo informed us about a non-resident named Mr. Oliver stating police were involved with him stealing packages from the property. The property manager reached out to the Northampton Police Department and they had no reports or calls regarding this person at our address. Our April meeting um, date uh, is currently in the email that I sent you slated for April 17th. However, that is Patriots Day and we need to move it to April 24th due to the timing of the annual plan. Based upon the parking lots and sidewalks at Hampshire Heights um, being delayed to the water mitigation part of the capital improvement project of Hampshire Heights, which must be completed first. We have asked DHCD to separate the walking area and lot of Cahill from the major project um, as uh, there's some uh, 
it's a smaller project and although it'll end up costing the state a little bit more, they've agreed that we should separate it out because the Hampshire Heights project has just gotten to be too big um, and it'll take too long to um, get to the lots and Cahill needs some attention in the parking lot. Uh, we're currently in the middle of three of our annual audits. Um, the AUP is being conducted by Lisa Fallon. The EHV voucher program is being audited by HUD and our federal audit uh, by Markham. The first elevator at McDonald House is complete. Uh, we're waiting the state elevator inspector to sign off. Once this is done, we will put it back online and begin car number two. The De Northampton Department of Health and Human Services hosted a vaccine clinic in the Florence Heights community room. Both COVID-19 and flu vaccines were available. 10 residents were vaccinated. Grow Food hosted holiday markets at our properties. They offered meal ingredients that included fresh produce and whole chickens. During the market, they provided hot chocolate and sang Christmas carols with our residents. We distributed 100 gifts from the Toys from Tots to parents for their children at both Hampshire and Florence Heights. We provided wrapping supplies to any parent that wanted to wrap their child's gift and pick it up. Christmas cards were created and distributed to all households from the Housing Authority wishing all residents a safe and happy holiday season. The Northampton Arts Council offered free first night buttons to any resident interested in attending the New Year's Eve activities in downtown Northampton. This gave them access to all the first night events for free. The podiatrist, Dr. Michael Kobe, held foot clinics at four of our elderly properties and 20 residents took advantage of this service. So ends my executive director report. Thank you. Are there any questions for Kara? Oh, yes, Commissioner Tarbutton, unmute yourself. Yeah. I am. Hi. Yeah, um, well, I just wanted to say, um, I, I appreciate the acknowledgement of the Arts Council. I didn't see it in the, in the uh, draft minutes because they were pretty good. And it wasn't, it was for uh, residents who, receive SNAP benefits. So I thought that that was pretty good. And I just wondered, do we ever send them a thank you note? I know we thank them here, but not everybody comes here or is part of this. Uh, maybe when we videotape, people can see how uh, appreciated they are. But I just wonder with the ongoing relation, relationships with the community, the community building, do we thank them? Um, I believe does send a thank you card out, um, Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, Danielle, you are here. Um, did you already send a thank you card out? I know you usually do. I have not sent a thank you card, but I did send an email. Thank you. Um, and the card is due to go out. Thank you. Good. We're on it. Other questions, uh, Commissioner Carnan? Uh, more a comment, um, maybe a follow up from last month to report. I continue to be impressed with the outreach that we're doing with the community. And um, especially, I think I heard at the end of your report, the podiatrist who's doing um, work with, with residents. So is that is that something though that um, folks uh, typically have covered under their insurance? Is this something that's a deep pocket expense for people or do you know? No, I do. Um, I uh, asked Danielle to look into finding us a podiatrist and um, a uh, beautician um, to be able, because oftentimes uh, elderly and disabled people um, uh, have things like diabetes. Um, and not all of you know, but before I did this, I was in nursing. And so um, I saw a lot of people who were unable to um, obtain access to podiatry. And um, unfortunately for someone that has a diabetes um, that can't get to a podiatrist, it's serious. They could lose a foot, they could lose a toe, they could lose a leg. Um, and so when you start getting to be elderly, that's very important. Um, and so um, it does go through the insurance. So they only have to pay their copay if they have insurance. Um, and if they don't have insurance, um, the RSCs are very good. And Danielle is very, very good at helping people get insurance um, so that they're able to participate. We've had a pretty good turnout. I'd like to see more people um, have the access to it. Um, and, and I've seen, um, you know, as the word spreads, I, I've seen more participation. Um, and I'm hoping further down the line, it'll, we'll get more and more. Great. Are you Thank finished? You. Thank you. I see uh, Commissioner Tarbutton has her hand up. 
uh, as one who totally utilizes the podiatrist here, as Danielle can tell you, the minute the note goes up, I go, pick me, pick me. Uh, it's really good. It's usually, you know, some scissors cutting it. It's sterilized. And uh, people are, as uh, you mentioned, they are coming to it. Um, you know, and I just think that's a, I think it's a wonderful idea. I mean, I, I have seen a resident with this foot amputated, a toe amputated uh, for diabetes, and that's a real problem. And I do think that it's amazing how many people come in that really need it. I mean, I would go to uh, get a pedicure and manicure, but I can't afford it. So just having that little bitty thing here uh, is really helpful. I do wish that there were other services, beauty services, pedicures uh, and manicures and hair, you know, maybe, you know, something with the, um, high school, vocational high school to get people hair done, but that would be a really nice thing to do. Just a little something for folks. We're, we're already um, we're already working on uh, that. We've actually been working on that before COVID started, um, getting someone at low cost uh, to be able to come in. Um, and, and I did find someone, I just didn't feel that their prices were something that our residents could afford. Um, and so, um, our search continues, um, but yes, those are things that we're looking to provide. Um, you know, hair, just even a haircut can make somebody feel tremendously better, um, you know, and uh, even just getting your nails painted or filed, um, you know, can make people feel better too. But we're trying to find somebody that will be willing to come in and do it and have it be cost-effective for our residents. Great. Do other commissioners have any questions for Kara? Great, it's a lot of good stuff going on. Thank you. And thank you for getting back to us on uh, some of the issues that were discussed at the last meeting. Okay, with that, we'll move on to the approval of the December 2022 minutes. And- uh, uh, I'll move to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. Who seconded? I didn't- hear That was Commissioner Cancel. Okay. All right. Are there any other corrections or additions? If not, will you call the roll? Yes. Approval of the uh, December 2022 minutes. Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Commissioner Tarbutton. I don't even see her now. Uh, yeah. She might have got kicked out. Yeah. Did you? Uh, she said she was having computer issues. I'll come back to her, but Jack, keep an eye on the waiting room to make sure she's not waiting. Uh, yeah. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Yes. Um, so, Madam Chair, without um, Commissioner Tarbutton, you have five yays. Do you want me to wait on the, on the remaining? Um, is was, there a way to text her and see if she's coming back? Yes, I certainly yeah. can. I, I hate to wait too long. I mean, it, we have approval, but I would be just interested in her. I would like to have her have the opportunity. To at least Is there vote. a way we can just suspend right now until, I mean, we can move on and then come back yeah. to this when she comes back on? Yes, I've texted her now. Um, and, oh, she said she had a computer glitch. Are you coming back? Wait a couple minutes. She's trying to get yeah. back in. Yeah. So, um, so I could, if you'd like me, uh, to, um, do the update on Hampshire Heights, which is moving along. And I then, and then we can come back to the minutes. So um, the draft of the existing conditions and topographic um, survey plans um, were done. Waterfield design went out, to, went out to the property a couple of times. Is she back? I don't see My her. screen keeps jumping all over the Yeah, so does mine. She's probably trying. Oh, here she is. Thanks, Jack. I don't see her still. Kara, you're muted. I know I'm muted because I have ah, a there she is. dog that was barking. Um, Can you okay, hear us? So, 
Commissioner Tarbutton, the approval of the December minutes. I just need your vote for that. Oh, I had a question with that. Am I the only one who's waiting or do we discuss it at all? Well, we voted already. We just need your vote. No, I had some comments. Sorry, well, my I computer computer glitched. It, 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 everything went off. Is there a way we can make room for Commissioner Tarbutton's questions or comments about the meeting, even though we were four votes in? Is this a problem, uh, Tom? I, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's let's make room for her comments. Yeah, let's go ahead, Commissioner Tarbutton. Thank you, Maureen. I appreciate it. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, I just, um, they were very, they were very small. I had some uh, comments that I wanted to make. I just wanted to say, uh, also in the last meeting, and I, um, when we got the um, uh, what is it, War Three and Neighborhood Watch people to come to, to that did the uh, great work that came and helped, especially doing the um, balcony clean off. What started, I guess, there was a memo that came from housing that kind of people were a little panicking over it. Said like, you got to get this thing done by this date. If not, it's going to be like fifty bucks an hour, blah blah blah. And so residents were in a bit of a panic. And so we have a. Um, a representative from housing that is also uh, with uh, Ward 3 and then they came in and that's how that discussion got and then that's how uh, Kathy Service got involved and then they contacted uh, Danielle but um, I think it was uh, I just wanted that to be mentioned it's really great that uh, everybody's working together but in that sense I think it came out because of uh, there was some concerns about uh, the fact that it had to be done at a certain time in November and people they really need a whole lot of time sometimes. It's unfortunate. They have to send the memo of the memo of the memo to remind them of the memo for some people to get on board. And just also have to notice that not everybody is computer savvy. If you say, I'll show you the link, they don't know what that is. Some people don't even know how to check their messages. So that becomes a bit of a problematic. So then that's why they got some concerns with that. So if uh, trying to find it exa exactly it was where it is, but if there was some uh, notation that um, because there was some concerns with a, uh, a memo that, that went out and I don't have it right now looking at it. Um, that's how uh, Northampton Neighbors Ward 3 got involved. Uh, the, to the, through the chair, please? Yes, Commissioner so Tarbutton. I, yeah, so I guess my question is if, if Commissioner Tarbutton has a, I have no objection at all to keeping my yes vote with the, with the corrections yeah. as offered but I think that Commissioner Tarbutton would have to give us the corrections a little bit more, the, the correction so that that correction can be added to the minutes. And um, do, do uh, for example, the secretary, uh, Kara, do, do, were you able to ascertain from Commissioner Tarbutton's comments now a succinct way of adding that as an addition to the, meet, to the meeting minutes? And then I'm happy to keep my vote be yes for that. Um, I, I had sent an email asking for the corrections and Commissioner Carbutton had indicated that she would email me, you know, where she needed and what she wanted changed and I never got anything back from her. I, I mean, I could, I don't even know what page that appears on. Uh, if you give well, me we have a few minutes. I think we have a few minutes. Yeah, let me, let me look and see. Could, even if yeah. Commissioner Carbutton could offer it now okay. in terms yeah, of yeah, the addition. Yeah, thank yes, you. Absolutely. I do. If she wants to tell me where, I, I can. Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I do. I just, I'm sorry. I just got a glitch and everything went off. So I had it keyed up. So I think I did find it. And I mm -hmm. actually did. You're right. I did say I wanted to go through it, but I feel more comfortable in front of the, the board to bring those issues up. So it's it says under executive director report, uh, the second paragraph, Savo Power Washing. Staff helped residents who needed extra support in cleaning their balconies. Also, received assistance from Northampton neighbors and Ward, uh, Ward 3, what do you call it? Mm -hmm. yeah, it Savo Power Washing, that part? And yeah. they received it from Ward so 3. I see the executive director report part and that's verbatim, uh, that's taken verbatim out of my report. Okay, I appreciate uh, all needed the support extra... from Yeah, no, it I says, just, go ahead. It says power, Salvo Power Washing, Staff helped residents who needed extra support with cleaning their balconies. Also received assistance from Northampton Neighbors and Ward 3 Neighborhood Association. We appreciate all the support our residents received from the community. Right. I just wanted to say it, it, it needed came to be about, changed. I, it just needed to be a, a little added to it. It's because of uh, 
with the power wash that came on in December. I don't know. If, I don't know. I think it was less than a month notice. And with that notice, a, a letter, and I don't have a copy of the letter right here. I did. Um, it said, you have to get this done by this date. I know it was before I left for Texas. So it was like. May and, I clear uh, the okay. chair? Uh, May I do yes. the chair again? Just because, so Commissioner Tarbutton, I think that be, when we approve minutes, we approve the minutes of the meeting. So if what you're saying is that there was something that was left out of the executive director's report, and you, and so I, I don't think it allows us to, to um, amend the minutes to um, correct, basically we, we can correct what was misreported. Yes. We can like if 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 um, Director Leeper had reported such and such and such, but she forgot to report what you're saying now, which is that there was also a letter that had been sent. Blah blah blah. That's not something that's a correction to the minutes. What it is is you're saying that you you would like to correct you. It's something that you brought up to correct the executive director when she made her report, and so I don't know that actually changing the minutes if you if we didn't last minute last meeting try uh, address this issue in the directors in the executive director's report then changing the minutes now would make it seem as though the director had made that information do you know what i'm saying does this well, uh, uh, yeah i mean the one reason i brought it up it's just like now when we talked about uh uh, I, I didn't see the notice with the uh, Arts Council and this time it was in there so that I appreciate and it was not so much of a correction but an addition that it was because of a, the email and all the stuff that went on that people went to War 3. Uh, War 3 didn't know about what goes on here until there was concerns from the clients and yeah. the, the way that everybody worked together was superb. Yeah, I was going to say that's a good example of an addition. If the Arts Council, Council helped out and they weren't mentioned then that that would be an, a good good example of an addition. So, um, Commissioner Tarbutton, you voted no. Do you want to change your vote or? No, I'll just abstain. I'll change it from no to abstain. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, um, the motion carries with um, six five yeas and <laughs> five five yeas and one abstention. Yeah, and one abstention. Yes, All right, thank you. Uh, Kara had started, uh, but I think she should start again because Commissioner Tarbutt was trying very hard to get back on. So yes. we'll uh, go now to the update on the basement at Hampshire and Florence Heights. So Waterfield Design Group, who um, is the um, J uh, Jacob Murray, the senior civil engineer, um, their company has been out to the property several times um, to do the topographical survey plans and whatnot. Um, it is moving along faster than it has ever moved along um, in the past. And um, although the parking lots and walkways won't certainly be done this year, the, um, we're, we're hoping that the water mitigation part will be completed this year. So it's moving along. It's just the update. Any questions about that? Okay, I'm sorry. What building are you talking about? It's the basements at Hampshire Heights. At Hampshire Heights. Oh. Is that so, right, Kara? Hampshire. Ba basements at Hampshire Heights, Florence Heights. So, the update. So, when is the estimated time that it should be uh, finished, or basements shouldn't? You know, luckily it's snowing and not raining out, but I'm just thinking, when is the time that that is supposed to be? I hate to use the word sealed up or repaired. You have any idea? Well, no. And I, I mean, I certainly, I, I can't, um, I mean, the state's moving faster than it's moved uh, to date, um, but the project is moving along. Um, they had to do the top, uh, topographic survey with the existing uh, conditions. Um, which they've done. They've uh, looked at a few basements. Um, and so the project is moving along. I certainly uh, would hope, um, but I can't guarantee, uh, but I would hope that the water mitigation part of this project um, will be completed this year. And then I'm hoping that, you know, by uh, summer of next year, that the parking lots and walkways would be done. It's part of a whole giant project, but. You know, 
Can well, we I'm just on? I'm just curious. Did you ever like have a meeting over there and say anybody else is having problems? Maybe it's not as bad as some people reported. But it's just to get an idea from the residents. What is if there's not just I don't know if there's it's, two a, it's a problem or... in it's a problem in um almost all of the basins over there and it's been a problem so. for many many years yeah um, and so that's why we asked DHCD to fund it it's over a million dollars um uh and and so when we start the project we will have them address the buildings that are the most crucial first you know the ones that have water some of them have had water you know pouring in from the side inside uh, foundation um, and hence why it's part of the lease that um, they're not to store anything or put anything down there because it's a known uh, water issue and has been known for many years um, and why it's so costly to truth be told of it. Okay, any other questions about the update? Alrighty, if not, we will move on. Uh, we have new business. Uh, issue number one we have already approved was the Gary um, presentation. So we will be moving on to number two, which is the authorization of the movement of valley bikes on the property side of the walkway uh, and you need to sign all the paperwork. Do you want to get yes. into that, dive into that? Yes, so previously the board approved um, that the Valley Bike Share um, place an insulation and tap into our electricity at Hampshire Heights. And they placed it on the tree belt side of the sidewalk, which happens to be the closest part to the road. Um, apparently, uh, recently, a vehicle took out the whole, um, damaged the whole entire structure. Um, and so because it did, it did get a lot of use, They'd like to put it back, but they don't want to put it back in a place wherein um, it could potentially be destroyed again because it's very costly. Um, so they've asked permission to move it to the opposite side of the um, uh, sidewalk, which puts it on our property. Um, and um, it, it would mean pouring a concrete pad, moving the electric, um, and, and they essentially would pay for all of that. Um, I certainly don't have a problem with it. It is something that our residents use quite a lot. Um, and uh, they did submit easement uh, paperwork, which I've had um, the attorney take a look at um, and, and would make sure that it's fine before I signed off. But I just needed board approval um, to, for them to move it onto our property. Um, Commissioner Tarbutton. Can y'all hear me? Oh, I just want to say, you know, I strongly support this and I'll tell you why. We at Savo House, we have uh, one of the Valley Bikes and it has made transportation <coughs> tremendous for folks. It's like a, I don't want to say a lifesaver. I, I don't want to get into that work, but I've seen more people using it. And not only that, with residents at, at the board uh, at, who lived in Savo House, they were able to get a year membership, you know, depending on the snow for $10 if they had SNAP benefits. And I'm telling you, it was a game changer in a positive way. And it is, from what I can understand, it, it is on Savo property, right? I know it's not the sidewalk. Yes, but it, it is, is, on, it is yeah. on Savo. At there Savo. were a few people, yeah, who had some problems with it. But just here's one thing. One person was able to get on the bike, go to the bike trail and go to the YMCA. What, what, a, what, a, what a wonderful thing that people could do. So I would strongly uh, support this. I, I didn't realize that I've seen the one at Hampshire going to, uh, yeah. Walmart all the time, and I didn't realize it was damaged. So yeah. I would encourage people to vote for it. It is a really good thing, I think. Commissioner Cancel, did you have your hand up? I can't see you on my screen, but I can see you in my participant list. Uh, yes, I did. I just had a quick comment. I don't want to take a lot of time, but I just want to say that <clears throat> I am a huge proponent of um, Valley Bikes being near um, our properties. It is a game changer. Um, but uh, in terms of this move, it's not only going to help the uh, bike kiosk not get hit, or, or potentially not get hit, but also something that a lot of people don't think about is the people that service these bike stations, they'll be a lot safer as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I definitely support the, the moving of this um, bike station uh, sort of in, in closer to, uh, to the property. That would be amazing. 
I think that the only thing, uh, the only way it will affect us um, uh, as a property um, is, you know, we take care of the lawns and whatnot. And so it'll reduce the amount of area that we have to mow. Um, and we might have to weed whack around it or something. But I certainly think that it's something that uh, the board should should do um, as uh, residents um, have really benefited from it. Um, and, you know, I, I've, I went over there and took a look at it and stood near it. Um, and people really fly down that road. And I have to say that, you know, if myself or my granddaughter was, you know, trying to rent one of those standing with that high speed traffic going by and the whoosh from it is, is almost, uh, it's frightening. Um, and so I, I was very eager to uh, tell Ms. Lavalley that uh, I'd happily bring it to the board and ask that you approve it. Any other comments? Uh, be none. Uh, so the motion is to um, authorize movement of the valley bikes to property side of walkway and authorizing the executive director <coughs> to sign the paperwork. Can I have a motion to approve? I'll make the motion. Thank you. Yes, second. Thank you. Okay, can you call the roll? I'm sorry, was that uh, uh, Vice Chairperson Brooks that seconded? Yes. Thank you. Um, uh, motion to authorize movement of the Valley Bikes to the property side of the walkway and the executive director to sign <coughs> up. Chairperson Richards? Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Brooks? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Thank you. Uh, six yeas, Madam Chair. So the um, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody. It looks like we're all pretty excited about access to bicycles. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, also under new business is um, I've had requests to talk about the election process for our annual meeting, which by bylaw is next month. So I thought what I could do is just give a little overview for those of you who haven't been through it before, or those of you who are still online and listening. So um, first of all, uh, according to our bylaws, we elect officers at an annual meeting. And that annual meeting is separate from our regular meeting. And it happens once a year. And the purpose of that meeting is to, well, we'll have the minutes of the previous annual meeting to approve. And then we will elect, uh, elect our officers. Uh, the officers uh, to be elected uh, are the uh, chair, vice chair, treasurer, uh, and council secretary. At, which is which is Kara, <laughs> right? Yeah, okay. Uh, so the, our secretary is a non-voting ex officio member of the board, and um, the secretary keeps the minutes and uh, all communications and so forth. Um, okay, uh, the duties of the chair basically are to, uh, w uh, in conjunction with the executive director to set the agenda and to run the meetings. The vice chair, if the, for any reason the chair is absent or cannot perform the duties uh, or there's a vacancy, the vice chair would take over. And the treasurer, this is an important one. The treasurer signs all orders and checks uh, for payment of money and shall pay out, disperse such monies pursuant to the direction of the board. So we vote to spend money and the treasurer actually signs the check. How many checks do we sign a year here? Um, a year? Well, I, I think I put. I think you, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I think I put. Uh, like 1,600? In the email. Um, give me one second. Yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to dig it out, too. Well, oh, so last year, we, we had around 1,600 checks. Yeah. Yeah, 1600, oh, I remember that. Um, okay, so that's, it's really important that somebody be very accessible 
to the office uh, to sign those checks. So um, uh, with that, I'll ask if there are any other questions. Oh, and then after the election, the board chair will sign assign to committees and the committees are the um, Community Pres Preservation Act position currently held by Jeff Jones um, and the personnel subcommittee as needed uh, uh, held by Commissioner Jones and Commissioner Brooks and the grievance committee uh, as need again as needed uh, for unresolved uh, resident and applicant <coughs> grievances and that's currently held by Jim Brooks and formerly Emily Lawfer and also Dr. Je Jessica Bossy. So that's who has those now and at this point I'll open it up for discussion. Uh, Commissioner Carney. Oh, I just did the quick math. I think that's about 32 checks a week. <laughs> okay. well, well, we had we had 155 last week. So it's a, okay, yeah, yeah. If you do it by year, yeah. And so some it's weeks a, it might be five, yes. and some weeks it might be 155. Okay. <laughs> well, at, at the at the beginning of the month, we have to pay landlords. So I think there's almost 500 landlords. So in addition to the normal weekly one week a month, there's almost, there's there's a lot because we have to pay the landlords. But I think I do have a lot of them on electronic payment now. So that's helpful. Yeah. But it's a big job. <laughs> yes, it is. And so then I guess the, the other question yeah. is um, just to, to quote. So, so is it at our February meeting then that we will hear nominations for these positions and then ha hold an election for these positions. Yes, that's right. Okay. We'll hear, have nominations at the meeting. Now you okay. can nominate yourself or you can nominate someone else. Uh, and then that person will also have the opportunity to say why they would like to have the position. And then, um, yeah, and then we elect. Okay. Any other questions? I did leave that out of the summary, sorry. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? I think yeah, I have a, a, yep. Okay, I, I heard two people. I have a question yeah. and a comment. Uh, oh. Who is this? I can't. That, that's uh, Commissioner Cancel. Okay, when you, yeah. uh, because I can't see your picture, can you just put your hand do the it does. It, it's, he it's, not, it's he, has, he has it up okay i don't know why you can't see it it does not appear on my computer okay mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why uh, i don't okay. want to leave them out <laughs> commissioner cancel sure yeah i have a question and then i have a comment um my question is so currently um commissioner brooks signs that many checks on that much of a regular basis yes yes <laughs> Um, well, uh, first of all, I think that should be commended. Uh, that is a lot of work. Um, and also, I uh, was looking at our website recently and, uh, and noticed that Commissioner Brooks has been with us since 1996. Is that correct? Yes. On our board? So, yes. first of all, I want to commend you for that, um, our Commissioner Brooks. I know that last year I made some comments that uh, perhaps um, were misunderstood or maybe I didn't, I didn't say them the right way, but um, I think that um, uh, part of why I wanted to ha have this as a conversation today is because of uh, sort of my same uh, sort of uh, uh, energy towards this that I had last year is that I, I just, I'm hoping that we could sort of make this a little bit more, uh, have a little bit more equilibrium in, in, in terms of how we spread the load, right? Sure. Um, because I, I, um, I certainly, uh, and, and also another thing I noticed is there's times where when Commissioner Brooks has been the only resident uh, board member, and, um, and for me that matters a lot. Uh, a resident has lived experience. So that experience, that lived experience, <laughs> very, very important when it comes to making decisions and um, uh, for uh, on the board and on behalf of residents. So um, uh, uh, um, 
Uh, Commissioner Brooks, I just want to tell you that I, I'm really grateful for the work that you've done all of these years, um, and that um, in no way I wanted to uh, sort of uh, think you're like hogging, you know, the uh, uh, the load or anything like that. In, in fact, you have been very helpful. You have uh, served on on a couple of other subcommittees, and I think that's um, really commendable. Um, in fact, um, I think you've done uh, you. you practically done all of these positions and uh, I would be really excited to nominate you next next month to be the president, if anything. So uh, I want folks to think about that um, because this is somebody who not only represents our board, but represents the residents as well. So, you know, uh, in an ideal world for me right now, in terms of how I think and how I feel that residents should have a lot of say in the decisions that we make as an organization, it would be amazing for me to see residents at, at, at these top positions. Uh, so I want us all to think about that um, when we think about the residents that we have currently serving on our board um, and that um, perhaps some people will be open to stepping up uh, to a position like that. So I want to encourage folks uh, to think about that um, and uh, I will certainly be uh, interested in running for these uh, positions as well. So that's, that's sort of my comment. And um, again, I just want to commend those of you who, who have put in, you know, many, many years into this work. Thank you, Commissioner Kensell. I just want to um, comment on a couple of things. I think one of the reasons why we had, we doubled up on a lot of roles was we only had five members up until we had um, the new law. So, you know, people were serving one and two roles, all of, all of us at the time. So we are fortunate, we've always been fortunate to have residents on our board. Uh, and if you remember uh, Commissioner Lawfer and Commissioner Brooks, and I can't remember who else, but, but now- Yes, yeah. Commissioner Turbin. So, so we've, um, well, yeah, we've always had, but I was saying, since the new law, we've had more, and I think it's helped us. I think it's really helped us to think out things. So I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, the other thing is I want to share in your um, uh, phrase for uh, Commissioner Brooks, and thank you for your signing all those checks and your dedication to the authority for the many number of years that you uh, have and hopefully will continue to give. So thank you. Other comments? Commissioner Tarbutton has her hand up. Yeah, um, I actually just think that that was actually a wonderful thing from one commissioner talking to another commissioner because I have to say I kind of felt a little weird about that last year was a lot of emotion going on and I think I don't I thought it was me who came out and made it seem like uh, Commissioner Brooks was underappreciated or something was going on. I do realize that the first year I got in, we that's when everybody, all the uh, the new law was changed, but we went still to what I think I feel doubling up. And it's interesting because I'm hearing people saying the positions and stuff. That's kind of not how I felt it. It seemed very rushed. I get very nervous when I'm rushed to do something. It's like maybe my years of working with car salesman signed a lot of line. I want to savor it and think about it. And I just remember <laughs> when I came on, I didn't know anything about people. I mean, if it wasn't for Commissioner Carney talking about being on um, city council, I wouldn't know anything about it. We don't afford where people can talk and say, I'd be good at this position because I, I want to learn about this. I have background in this. I have blah, blah, blah. I think that's what, when you're selecting or electing positions that's what you do not like I'm not saying it's been this way not like well historically it's been this way and blah 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 and I think I'm just going to say it not so much here but in other boards that I'm with if it wasn't for someone saying try this out because I didn't have any experience on most of the stuff I have experience but not in that and not in that group if it wasn't for someone giving me the quote-unquote opportunity I would not have been able to do it. And I ended up, love, I never thought I'd be in a governing committee, governor and writing bylaws. That is not something I thought I would do in another group. But given the opportunity, and I think this is what people are saying a lot when they are joining, they want to have an opportunity, not like, oh, it's been this way. Because I don't like when they say, well, it's always been this way or it has to be this way or whatever. I just, 
I'd like for it to be open. I'd like to know more about people. The only other person I've ever met or talked to, and, and there was uh, uh, you, uh, 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 Chair uh, Richards, we met and had a tea and you talked about the position, but before that, I didn't know anything about you. And it was good to know about you, you know, where you came from, what you're interested in doing and what you've done. But before that, we don't have that opportunity uh, unless you know each other and exist each other in some other <clears> way. So I think that it is, it is important. I'd like for, I would like for the board to represent the people they represent. Can you imagine? I mean, I, I think having, you know, Commissioner Brooks as a chair, He's a, he's a resident. He's been here forever and a while. And it was actually through his clarity and some of the things we talked about that I had a better understanding. But um, just for you know, I would never think about doing treasurer right now. I can't balance my own checkbook. But I just think that that's something Me we too. should think about. <laughs> and I would like to see, uh, I'd like to see us that we can talk about our positions. I just, I want the freedom to choose. I don't want anyone telling me who to choose and who not to choose. That's all that I ask. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Torrey. I get that. And it just, I want to bring one point out that you made, which is very good. I think people should, and in fact, our bylaws say, state, you know, if they're nominated and accept the nomination to state why they want it, maybe a little bit about why they're qualified for it. So I, I agree with you. I think that's very important. Uh, Commissioner Carney, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I, Sorry, I wanted to. Uh, I agree that it, it would, uh, in a perfect world, it would be great if we could um, be able to share all these things. But we are restricted by open meeting law. I mean, that's what we're restricted. We can't like have these conversations that aren't in a public meeting. One on one, we can, but in any one on like uh, like the example that Commissioner Carbutton. Tarbutton gave of meeting one of the other commissioners for lunch. We're not restricted by doing that, but we can't have three of us at a time having at a table because right now with a with the fact that we don't have two commissioners, I think, oh, we don't have Commissioner Loeffler and not, but it changes, it changes the actual um, quorum where if we were to try to get together, you know, we just have to be very careful in that respect, which has hindered has made it really difficult yeah. for any of us in government bodies in terms of being able to talk about, you know, but, and at the same time, I understand why it's important for us to have these conversations about our qualifications in a very formal way and in an open meeting. So we'll have that opportunity next month. Yep. From what I can see, we'll have the opportunity to see who nominates themselves or gets nominated and then be able to, you know, it'll be a interesting and democratic process. Okay, I see Commissioner Kensell with his hand up. He, he never, he, he I oh, think he never took it, it down. Put, I forgot to put it down, but Commissioner Kensell. Uh, no, Ron. no, I left it on, I left it on on purpose, thank you. I just had one, one, one uh, comment that I forgot to say is that for us to think about the message that we're sending our community, if we put uh, residents um, at, at, at the top of our, uh, at these top positions, so, Think about that because um, that's a big statement that we're making in our community if we kind of think about those things. Well, I do Thank hope you, that, and, and I'll just commit, I, I hope that some residents will put their names up for president and vice president. Well, presently we have sure. a resident in a top position as vice president. And I think secretary is already by the bylaws taken by the executive director. So it's whether or not we divide out in what are we calling top positions? And I think we're saying that's president, vice chair, president, secretary, chair, and treasurer. Vice chair, chair. And treasurer. Yeah. yeah. Chair, vice chair, and, and, and secretary. And well, actually, it's only three. There are three positions. That's right. That's three right. positions. There are three positions that we'll be talking about. So, yes, if we can have all three of those by res uh, filled by residents, that would be fantastic. We already heard one person say she won't serve as treasurer. So, we don't know. Well, you know, we'll see what happens next month. Other and I would say too, then there's uh, the other appointments that the new chair will make, which is the community preservation, which Commissioner Jones has been so well to represent us on that. And then if we have a uh, resident, um, uh, our, our, we need the personnel committee to do that if we have uh, things we can't resolve. That's very important even though it's not a, an um, it's an appointed position versus an elected position, 
I don't want to demean its importance because- Can you clarify that there are two or three resident board members right now? Three, we need one. Three. No, I'm sorry. So currently we there are two, two and we need one. Okay. We need no. three. Okay. okay. Hang, no, on, no. hang on. Can we ask Tom? Because I think we need, I don't think we need any more, but we would like so to. We, we, cur the, we currently have two. The law, both old and new, require that we have a minimum of two. Um, but we do have an open position that was formerly occupied by a resident. Um, it's the mayor's decision whether it's a resident or not going forward. Thomas, did I sum you that? Did. You yeah. did. Thank you. you did. Um, and just, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry, um, Madam Chair. I just want to point out one thing really quick because I know we have some new people um, here as well. Um, but Jeff Jones has been on the board for almost 20 years. Yeah. And this, this is Maureen Carney's second go round yes. on the board, and so. Um, I, and, and Jim has been instrumental, but Jeff and Maureen a, a, as well. I think that all of you, you know, Joella, Edgardo, Jeff, all of you, you know, this is not a paid position, really. You get a stipend, but, you know, it says something that you're dedicating your time um, to helping um, the community. So thank you very much for doing that, all of you. And, and I, I totally agree. I admire uh, your dedication. I just want to say one more thing. So on the board, the mayor gets three appointees. The governor gets one. Right? So, so the old law uh, <laughs> was five, five members, four yeah. were appointed by the governor, one no. one. Yeah. One had to be a resident with the new it added two one of which must be a resident and one has to be the housing partnership um the original yep. five one has to be a labor position so yep. um, with the old and the new law melded it's a total of seven two of which have to be residents one has to be appointed by the governor and five are appointed by the mayor, regardless of what position they hold as far as union rep or whatever. But we, we all, still we have, have the requirement. Have union rep. Yeah. We still have the requirement for the union rep, right? Yes. 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 We still have the and requirement that's, for the that's union Jeff rep. Jones right now, right? That's me yes. right, right now. Yeah. Okay. So thanks. The, right now. the process for that is usually the, Jeff, do you want to talk about that process instead of me? <laughs> Which one about the union the, position? Yeah, the union representation how the um, union yeah basically at the time uh actually historically um marine was on the the board and asked me to take over because city council passed a new rule that said you could not be on this, the council and one of these boards at the same time so that's how i originally came into all this so um in the past, there's been a discussion with um, when the when the day comes and I'm no longer here, I will be um, telling the local um, labor council that the spot is opening up and you need to consider um, someone else, and then the mayor will get that person's name and go from there. But um, you know, that's down the road a little bit. I, I got a, I got a, a term here to finish out. No, I, I, I just wanted to make it clear that we do, uh, we must have representation from labor and that the labor council and the mayor work together really to uh, make that happen. And they have and the worked way, together the... for years to uh, appoint Jeff and obviously Maureen. <laughs> And the, the, the way the law is written is that there are three different union, uh, I believe it's the limousine, uh, there, there's three different unions um, and they're all three notified and they must give um, no less than two, but no more than five um, names to the mayor to choose from and the mayor chooses from them. And I only know, cause I just read that today again, right. had the thing out because we're gonna be taking over the Hampshire County we were, I was talking to the Sabadoza, so I happened to read that today. Okay, I see uh, Commissioner Tarbutton has her hand up. Yeah. 
uh, is that my phone? No. Um, well, no, I just, uh, one of the things that I would like to see, and I, I, and again, I think when I went to uh, a convention and they had mock trials and mock this, you got to ask a variety of questions. Um, I think that not every, not every uh, executive director, ex officio or whatever the case may be, is a secretary. As a matter of fact, a lot of people did. And they said, that's a lot of work, you know, writing up the meetings and all that. So, and I even think beforehand, uh, I was only here a little bit when uh, John Height was here, but I don't think he took the notes. I think he had someone in the office that they gave um, uh, time to come in and do the notes. So what I would, what I would hope is that I'd like to, I feel like there's a bit of an enmeshment. I'd like for it to be some separation of uh, church and state kind of thing. I think that I, you know, when I think of a person being the chair, I'd like for them to be independent, you know, um, fair, uh, representing everyone. Not that that hasn't happened, but talk about the position. I think, again, we're just now talking about some people because it's not always there on the calendar, like, oh, get ready for the February elections, you know, or February nominees. Think about it. I think that if it had been there, it would have been something that we could have uh, thought about. Some people may say it's all the every February, whatever the case may be. But uh, I think that it it it, it would benefit if we if, if it was discussion. And I meant one on one because you're right. We can't have individual. And I have to tell you, I don't really know any. It, you know, I don't know any of you to discuss with you. And I, according to the bylaws, there are some standing committees. But I have to tell you. Uh, other than what Jeff does, I didn't know he did that part of the committee. So thanks for enlightening me on that. I don't think we've had a finance or an ad hoc. I don't think we've had it. So I'd like for us, if we're going to adhere to the bylaws, let's do all the bylaws. Um, okay, I encourage you to read the updated bylaws. But to, um, I just need to say one thing about um, the secretary position. Um, it's in our bylaws. So if we right. change that, we would have to change our bylaws, which we, you know, um, Tom. Um, thank you. I'm very sorry to interrupt you, uh, uh, Marilyn, but it's not only in the bylaws, it's in chapter 121B. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the statute it's that law. requires the executive director to be the secretary. So right. the bylaws are just parroting what the statute What the says. law, yeah. So there's absolutely zero wiggle room there at all. Um, he or she, Kara in this case, is the, the secretary on right. the statute. There are lots of things in our bylaws that are law. So mm -hmm. whether I, I bylaws are law, but what Tom is saying is that we can't even change our bylaws. Can I ask Tom a question? Wait, uh, wait, yes. um, can I just let Miss uh, uh, Commissioner Tarbutton know something? Um, Commissioner Tarbutton, I know I'm the secretary, but just so that you know, yeah. I'm not the one that transcribes these minutes. So the minutes are recorded, and then I have a staff member who then listens to the recording and types out the minutes. Um, so, so although I'm the secretary, um, she does the minutes she gives them to me. I review them and make any changes that I see. And then I send them out to you all for any potential changes that you may see too. So I just, I didn't want you to think that I'm the one listening to the minutes and typing them out. So I just wanted to clarify that. And I know you had a question. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, I had a question with Tom. Tom, um, before I, I, I wasn't here with Jim Height one, one month, did was the bylaws the same because bylaws can be changed and the laws can be changed too and i'm not trying to advocate for that now i'm just asking this for a point of clarification but was this always the case or is it within the uh, last uh eight to nine years um a no. two-part two -part answer the the bylaws were amended pretty significantly yeah. it was commissioner silver who spent a, a lot a lot of time rewriting the bylaws so they have changed but the second part, what has not changed is who the secretary is, because the bylaws, we would not be able to, to have the bylaws say something different than the statute, namely chapter 120B, right. 121B, excuse me, section, I, it, escape, it, it escapes me off the top of my head, but that chapter and section requires the executive director to be the secretary. So that part did not change. And John Height was the secretary when he right. was the executive director. Okay, and right. I just appreciate clarification. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I just say I appreciate that because a lot of times when I'm asking questions uh, for clarification, 
it is helpful to answer it instead of like, did you not see it in the note or did you not see the new bylaws? Because I did. So ask for clarification doesn't mean I didn't see it. I just doesn't really, sometimes it doesn't make sense to me. And that's why I'm asking for clarification. So I appreciate when it's being so, talked to, we could remember that please. So is it clear now um, that, uh, I just wanna make sure that everyone is clear on, um, and, and tar uh, Commissioner Tarbotton that you understand that it's in the bylaws, but it's also the law. So chapter 121B of the Gen Mass General Law is what dictates who can be the chair. And although it's in the bylaws, uh, I'm not the chair, I'm sorry, the secretary, I misspoke, um, the secretary and the law is what requires that. But know that I, I have many levels that I utilize staff to do things um, to help out because it is a lot of work, but I do do that and then it's part of my job. Well, the only the, the only thing that I'm bringing this up is, I, as I said, I'd like to see it a little bit. I get it. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit of the separation of church and state here. I really would like, you know, the board is the board and your executive director. It seems like we're in mesh and I don't know who's leading who, but I really wish us to have some independence, some autonomy, following the rules, of course. But it makes me, um, I just think that we need to kind of practice what we're supposed to be preaching in that regard. Commissioner Carney. Yes, uh, um, I would say that the uh, that um, the only way we can separate church and state, which I believe to be somehow uh, disconnect the executive director from the board when state law requires it, is to engage our state senator and state representative and talk to them about changing the law. So I think if if uh, Commissioner Tarbutton, if you're interested in doing that, I think that those would be the people to reach out to. And it would be a many, many, many year long process, but, and it would require the other state representatives across the state, 330 cities and towns, those people would also have, have to be brought on board. So I don't know how, how certainly not in our, our tenure on the board, it would happen um, that we would actually be in a position to uh, separate the executive director off of the board. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I, I just, I'm not saying that that's exactly what I want. I would just like to see that. I'd like the board to get the feeling like that. In some ways, as I said, enmeshment, um, I feel that, um, you know, you know, the, the fact- No, I, I don't understand. I don't well, understand well, okay. what you're saying. Well, let me try to say this. When I get a call from the executive director saying to vote for their chair of choice, why would somebody who's not on the board, the executive director be calling a commissioner, resident board member, asking about my vote for the board? Okay, I, I just wanna kind of stop this back and forth okay. conversation, but right. um, I just wanna say that we the separation occurs, I think when we read the minutes after they're prepared and then approve them at the, at the meeting. So we do have a chance and Commissioner Tarbutton, you, you know, had the opportunity today to make some additions to our minutes or talk about them. And um, so that that is the separation by law that that we have right now. So please read your minutes and and make corrections if you see them. Well, I did actually. I would, and I'd like to have a copy of the minutes after each meeting, the electric, so I could go through it. But I do. I don't want to go belabor over this, but I think the major point, the elephant in the room, is that when I say someone should be telling us, a board member, how to vote or whatever, who's not on the board, that's cause for concern. I guess I'm the only board member who finds that. You have concern. to ask Kevin McCarthy about that. <laughs> you know, um, Ma Madam well, I'm Chair. I'm up two days watching that. <laughs> Ma Ma Madam Chair, I'd also like to just make a comment if, it, if you're all right with that. Yes, please. That is that, um, Commissioner Tarbutton, you you think that we, you're stating that we should be um, separated, but really, in fact, both DHCD and HUD and all the regulations say that the board and the executive director are a team. So we're supposed to be a team that works together to provide decent, safe, and sanitary housing for our residents which I think we do, we're doing a great job in doing that. But that confusion is, I think, for me, um, you know, what, what, is, what is hemming some people up here is that it shouldn't be a division. We're supposed to be working together. Yeah. 
I think I'm being misunderstood. I'm not saying that. I think that we are supposed to be a team. We're supposed to be working together. But I'm saying when I'm getting a call for the executive committee for the chair, which is a very important position from you as executive director, and then moments later from the chair. Okay, we've already, this way. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't I want to discuss that any further because we've already discussed it. Well, so that's what um, I meant, not about the working yeah, relationship. Okay. I just don't want anyone calling me, asking me who to vote for, because I think there's some unethical issues going on there. Okay, I, I would say that that's in some ways how elections work, is that uh, when you run for an office, and I think Maureen Carney will agree with me, if you decide to run, you sort of, you know, you sort of go out there and see, you know, what it's all about and what kind of support you might get or not. And then you make a decision whether you're going to run or not. So that's, yeah. So that's, uh, anyway, I would like to see any other, any other board members that have anything to say. Otherwise, I think we can put this to rest and we'll deal with it at our annual meeting. And I have a question about the annual meeting. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the annual meeting. So that's also with uh, tenant involvement. Is that not right? No. And no. I wonder, okay. No. So the annual meeting. Okay, because I'm wondering when that happens, when we're talking about the annual meeting, uh, if tenants have been schooled on that, if there's been any workshops to help them understand um, uh, what's going on in their involvement. Uh, okay, that's, that's a very good question. So the annual meeting is really for the board to elect the officers. That's what it's about. That's like in city council, uh, the day after the inauguration, they all get together and they nominate the chair of the city council. And- um, I think the president, yeah. So yeah, or the president of the city council, yeah. So that's- I think, I, I think um, Madam Chair, that um, Commissioner Tarbutton um, is mixing up the annual meeting and the annual plan. The annual plan is where residents get involved. All right. That has right, to right. Be capital okay. stuff. This is something right, right, completely right. different. To, completely different. Okay, Commissioner Carney, did you want to? Yeah, I just had a question. So, um, for next month, will the annual meeting be precede our regular monthly meeting? Yes. And is it at the same time at 530? And then our regular meeting happens yep. just after that. Yep. Whenever, uh, like, let's say our annual meeting goes on for an hour. So then it, the regular meeting, the regular meeting, monthly meeting won't start until we're done, no matter when that correct. is. That's okay. correct. That's yep. correct. Okay, that's all I was wondering. And the, and the new chair, who's ever elected chair, will take over at that point. I see. So the they will then... Passed. Yep. But you, but the present chair, meaning you, Marilyn, and the executive director will work setting the agenda for the next month's monthly meeting. For the February meeting, you'll still set the yes. agenda with the yeah. chair. Oh, with yeah, the, that's okay. correct. Okay, so but then, the, then, meeting but then will act, the meeting will actually be conducted by the by secretary. The well, the annual meeting will be conducted by the chair for the election of the officers. Then And then the new chair will mm -hmm. run the monthly meeting that calls Correct. right now. Yeah, okay. that's right. Okay. So actually this has been very helpful. <laughs> Everybody gets to brush up on their, you know, how we do things and it's been educational. So thank you uh, for bringing it up and I, I hope it's been informative. So if there's no other business, uh, we will, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Did someone have a oh. hand up? I thought I saw it. Oh, I don't think so. I think it's this. Okay. Edgar Kinsell <laughs> gave you the motion. And I didn't second. Okay, okay, Maureen, Maureen seconded. Okay. All right. So we'll officially see. adjourned at 659, Madam yes. Chair. Great. Thank you so much. We'll Thank see you, you all next month.